Wait until you see the way Jordan Peterson confronted the actor and renowned atheist Stephen Fry on God. He leaves him absolutely speechless, as only Peterson can do. We're going to analyze their discussion. We're going to see precisely how Peterson revealed, even to this staunch atheist, that his yearnings for God are closer than he ever imagined. I, right. Okay, I'm going to read something, and forgive me. No. I want to go here. You're face to face with God. <laughs> Bone cancer in children. What's that about? How dare you? Mm. How dare you create a world where there is such misery? That's not our fault. It's utterly, utterly evil. Why should I respect a capricious, mean-minded, stupid God who creates a world so full of injustice and pain? And then one more. Because the God who created this universe, if it was created by God, is quite clearly a maniac, utter maniac. Ivan in the Brothers Karamazov. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Right. Now, it's in, okay, so yes, what happens in the Brothers Karam Karamazov is that Ivan wins the argument. Yeah. But Elosha is the better person. Completely and, so. And, and we right, love right. him. So it's, yeah. It's right. a book so everyone should read. it's very interesting. I, I would urge right. everyone to read The Brothers Karamazov because I, I do think it's a work of genius. There's a lot about Dostoevsky I really dislike because of his influences. Again, people who don't understand Dostoevsky think he's a champion of right-wing religiosity uh, without understanding that he went through an extraordinary life experience to come to where he did come and that it his novels show his full understanding of all kinds of different points of view. But in terms of the dialectic of of, of that issue about how, how there can be a God, I, I mean, I was answering a question that I was asked. I know, and I'm, I'm, not, and try, I'm not, course, really not trying to put you on the my, spot. My point is I don't believe there is such a being. But if there were, and he were the kind of being that has been worshipped and described by various religions around the world, the monotheistic religions, then I would have many bones to pick with him. Now, right here, Stephen Fry immediately demonstrates explicitly his total and utter theological ignorance. This is a pattern that I see over and over again among atheists. Those who are most hostile towards the idea of God are at the same time often the most ignorant of what theistic traditions are even talking about when it comes to God. Fry says he doesn't believe in, and I'm quoting him here, such a being or that kind of being that people worship. Unfortunately for Fry, when it comes to the great classical conceptions of God, whether they be Jewish, Christian, uh, Platonist, the Islamic tradition, Hindu, Buddhist, God is emphatically not a being. He's not a kind of being. God is being itself. God's not a thing that exists like a tree or a flower, or a cat or a mountain. God is the very existence in which all finite things participate. God is the infinite fullness of being that is the precondition for the existence of any and all finite contingent things. And the classical argument for God is rather simple. It really boils down to a singular claim. Because contingent things are by definition dependent for their existence and that they can come to be, they're sustained, and at some point they cease to be, because contingent things are by definition dependent, it cannot be that only contingent things exist. There must be a necessary being, a being that cannot not be, that contains within itself the infinite plenitude of being that ultimately grounds every and all contingent thing, including the entire universe itself. So Stephen Fry is starting off this conversation with a straw man. He's beating up a god that no theistic tradition has ever affirmed in or believed in. The argument from evil, as it's known, is a, is a very old one, and, and it goes back through through the, through you know medieval religious figures as well as uh, later humanists that this idea that uh, uh, it is it is very hard to square this loving God who has a knowledge of every hair on our head and adores us and um, and adores little kittens, but he also as I say, bone cancer in, in, in children, but also life cycles of insects that whose whole aim is to burrow into the eyes of children in Africa and and lay their eggs there and cause blindness for those children. I mean, you could quite easily picture a universe in which there weren't such an animal. So this is what's known as the argument from evil, as Stephen Fry noted. It's a very powerful 
arguments and was famously employed in the Dostoevsky novel, The Brothers Karamazov. That's what Jordan Peterson was referring to earlier. But of course, the problem with this argument that Dostoevsky's novel Crime and Punishment explores is that apart from an objective moral law, there is no objective way of ultimately defining evil. In other words, the actual existence of evil presupposes a divine moral law with which to differentiate between good and evil. And thus, Fry ends up trying to disprove God with an argument that's valid only if God exists. For example, Fry is a huge fan of abortion. For him, abortion is a fundamental human right. The freedom to choose is a good that ought not to be infringed. And yet, when this supposed God that he's beating up on does the same thing, when God makes choices between life and death, suddenly God is evil. We choose who lives and dies, and we're perfectly ethical in doing so. God chooses who lives and dies, and suddenly he's the paragon of evil. You see, this is what happens when you try to define good and evil apart from an objective eternal moral law. It ends up collapsing in on itself. If there's no eternal moral law that transcends all personal opinions, then morality inevitably collapses into personal opinion, which is ultimately enforced by will and by power. So ironically, the only way Fry can fault God morally is if he first assumes a divine moral law with which to fault God. But of course, without God, such a divine moral law could not possibly exist. What's the appropriate attitude, given that the argument you make is actually an extraordinarily powerful argument? And I don't know the answer to that, but I, but I do know, I think, that resentment and anger and even the motive that would make you want to say that to God himself, I think that's probably not helpful, <laughs> even though it's so, well, it, I came to that with great difficulty. I mean, I've had my reasons to be resentful and angry, especially recently, and because I'm suffering a lot of pain. Yeah. And yeah. it makes me resentful and angry and wanting to shake my fist. Yeah. But I found upon intense consideration that there was nothing in that that didn't make it worse and that therefore that must be wrong. That's Alyosha. That's Alyosha from, from Brothers K, what Peterson just described there so emotionally and so touchingly. That's what the main character Alyosha and the Brothers Karamazov does throughout the novel. That's what he discovers. He didn't have a philosophical answer for his brother Ivan who brought up this extraordinary problem of evil, but he did have an existential answer answer that that he works out throughout the novel. Alyosha's answer is that the clenched fist against God, all the resentment, the anger and bitterness that naturally comes from all the pain and agony and evil in this world actually makes things worse. It psychologically and morally destroys us. It degenerates our hearts, our very beings. By contrast, Alyosha realized that what makes us truly human is the divine grace that enables us to continue the pursuit of the good, the true, and the beautiful in the midst of a world so horribly ravaged by evil. It's like that beautiful scene in Peter Jackson's version of The Lord of the Rings when Frodo began to despair and asked Sam what could possibly keep them going in the midst of this hell that had been unleashed in Middle-earth. And Sam said it so beautifully. We keep going because we're holding on to something. That there's some good in this world, Mr. Frodo, and it's worth fighting for. That's the heart of the religious impulse. And Jordan Peterson is about to reveal to the atheist Stephen Fry that such an impulse thrives deep within him as well. The other question I have when I look at the, the, the response that, that I just read is that the amount of the world's evil that's a consequence of our voluntary moral insufficiencies is indeterminate. You know, so you might say, hypothetically speaking, that as part of God's creation, we actually have important work to do. And if we shirk it, the consequences are real. Yeah. And you might say, well, that's just an apology for God. And perhaps that's the case. And perhaps there's no God at all. And so what the hell are we talking about? But, but, I do think it's an important issue. I mean, your life is char characterized by a stellar level of constant productive creativity. 
that's that that's you and you're offering that to the world and that seems necessary and maybe it's because the problems are real and important and and the role we have to play ethically is of paramount importance truly yeah why else would we torture ourselves with conscience and and i would say that's the flowering of the religious instinct within you well the, you wow uh, he's speechless he's speech again this is what makes Peterson so astonishing. He commands so much respect from these guys like Stephen Fry, Sam Harris, Bill Maher, that he can basically look at them and say, in effect, you are evidencing the heart of the religious instinct in your own life. These atheists think they're wholly separate and distinct from religion, and Peterson masterfully confronts them with their own unconscious and yet undeniable thoroughly religious instincts. This is what makes Jordan Peterson such an important intellectual leader in an increasingly post-secular world, a world where even the avowed atheists admit defeat. As always, make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. And you will definitely want to check out my latest video on Jordan Peterson, leaving the rather belligerent atheist Sam Harris speechless on God. You're not going to want to miss it, so make sure to click on that link, and I'll see you over there. God bless.